أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم مدد يا سيدي يا رسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم انظر حالنا واشفلنا وعبدوني بمددكم ونظركم مدد يا سيدي يا سلطان الأولياء مع شيخ عبد الفايز الداغستاني مدد يا سيدي يا سلطان الأولياء مع شيخ محمد نازم حقاني مدد يا سلطان قلوبنا مولانا شيخ هشام كباني مدد الحق يا حجة الله يا المخلص انظر حالنا واشفلنا وعبدوني بمددكم ونظركم أنا الحمد لله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأولو الأمر منكم أنا الحمد لله فى الله عز وجل رحمة and mercy and always a reminder for myself أنا عبدك العجيز وضعيف ومسكين وظالم وجهل and that we exist by the grace and the rahma of Allah عز وجل not by any amal or any action but Allah عز وجل's rahma be upon us and that that rahmah take us into the oceans of mercy. That alhamdulillah that Allah guided us to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and into the hands of awliyaullah. And their uloom and their knowledges to take us towards the marifah, the realities in which Allah wombs. For the understanding tonight was the lataif and the teachings of the salah, that the qalb is the point of entry and the station of knowledges means that we go from the qalb to the sir and then it cuts down like an eight, it goes through the black. That black is like a black hole, the reality of the fajr means you're going through that black to the sir of sir which is white over to the green and from the green it cra crosses back through the black back to that yellow. And in the understanding of the salah and how it relates to the lataif of the qalb, inshaAllah that the reality for us, we've said before many times, reminder from myself is that Allah wants us to know that we come from the heavens, we are a spiritual creation sent upon earth for a physical experience. That Allah and what Prophet brought for us is a fine line on how shaitan tries to fool insan. Shaitan's cleverness is a, like a line that if he can pass that line onto people they lose their reality and their understanding and the greatness of Allah greatness of the deen and the religion that Prophet brought was a completion for humanity to complete the understanding of themselves. They are in need of all the Prophets, the understanding of all the messengers and the love that completes their reality. And what Allah want to know is that our day starts from the night, our day starts from Salat al-Maqarib. Salat al-Maghrib is the beginning of our journey because Allah wants a reminder within ourselves because as soon as we come to this reality we begin to keep contemplating why everything begins at night time? Why are all the celebrations the night is Surah wal miraj The night of power means that every celebration in this way is based on the layl. Why? Because Allah Prophet and Ulul Am who are teaching us from their realities, Allah want to know that the occasion is there, not on your dunya. In, your, in the world of light, in the akhirah, to you is represented by darkness because it's a dimension in which you can't see. That you are coming from the oceans of the heavens, you are coming from the malakut. And they are now just understanding that darkness doesn't mean it's void of anything. They found that the universe is actually tremendous amount of dark matter. There's a tremendous amount of darkness but there's something there that Allah has just not illuminated. Means then the reality for us is that we are from the heavens. 
and that every occasion is starting from the heavens, the rahmah from the heavens wa tanzila and it will come down upon your creation. So then remember you come from the heavens and that you don't come from this dunya. Don't forget your origin. So our day starts with that reality of maqrib. Means that Allah and shaitan we said before want to fool and, and it's like a, a string that when you conceive a child nine months it's alive within the womb. The birthday is when? As soon as the baby is born. You bring a cake, say happy birthday. They don't say that. They wait to one year and then say happy birthday. Why? Why to wait? Why shaitan want that wait? So that you think that baby is not alive in the womb. That, that doesn't count as a life. You kill it if you want, suffer. Shaitan, you fool people to think something so simple by waiting one year to say happy birthday is a lie. And they start everything with a lie. And Islam comes to say, no, speak the truth, live a life of truth. Don't base your life off of falsehoods from one false thing to another false thing. Haqq al Islam and what Prophet brought are realities. They don't know from the moment that that heart moves in, the conception begins. 120 days the soul, like a passenger, comes into the heart of that creation, immediately the heart is beating, life is beginning. Nine months. 36 weeks. 36 is what? Heart of Qur'an, Yaseen wasallam. Everything Allah says, everything is perfectly numbered. But who will understand? The people of tafakkur. They slow down, they don't let the fast life to fool them. Everything is a, is a contemplation tafakkur. Everything is to take a hisab. Ya Rabbi, nine months and the power of nine and the nine sultans and all these realities and this times four becomes thirty-six. The heart of Qur'an means there must be a secret coming that making this creation to come into existence and it's coming from paradise. The light is coming, the soul is a passenger coming from paradise, coming into the womb then coming onto this earth. And as a reminder for us that this is a sacred existence. So then our, be our day begins at Maghrib. As soon as we go to Salat al-Maghrib, we pray Salat al-Maghrib and then we have the Janazat al-Ghaibeen, the unseen Janazah is a reminder for us that not only for all those who passed away because these are from the Maqam al-Ihsan. These are not common people understanding. They want us to understand the salah and the reality of salah from the stations of perfection. From the station of perfection the servant is entering back in to their origin because it'll loop around and we catch back that understanding. That these are the people of hayat in which they mastered a state of death. As soon as Salat al-Maghrib comes, a reminder for them. And Allah described that the child is created in three veils of darkness. Means that the womb has three veils of darkness and this whole understanding is like a rahim, is like a womb. That you're going to pass Maghrib, Salat al-Isha and Fajr and then you're going to be born. Three veils of darkness. You're going to come from Maghrib to the apex of the world of Malakut which is Salat al-Isha and you're going to be descending through Salat al-Fajr into your existence and manifestation. And then for us the understanding is that as soon as these servants enter into Salat al-Maghrib it's a reminder for them a state of death and annihilation. It's a state in which the akhirah, their malakut, that they're asking, Ya Rabbi, that we're asking to leave this dunya and return us back. Wa ilayhi turja'oon, that we come from a different reality, we're asking to go back into that reality. That for them begins at Salatul Maghrib. 
As soon as Allah darkens the sky, layli wa nahar, that you're entering into a state of fana and annihilation. Darkness represents annihilation. That Allah say, you're coming to me but don't manifest yourself, don't manifest from what you, what you acquired from dunya, don't manifest uh, thinking that you're anything. Begin your phase of death in which you are nothing, which you are nothing and the Ya Rabbi wa ilayhi turja'oon and let me go back, let me go back to my reality. Then they ask that pray Salat al-Janazat al-Qaibeen at the end of your Salat al-Maghrib, why? Because these four takbirats are for the four enemies that have destroyed insan. Means the nafs, dunya, hawa and shaitan are four enemies against insan. And they have quartered the reality of the soul. The nafs, the, the wildness of the nafs, the hubb dunya hubb al-hawa and all the physical pleasures and shaitan, they have split the soul from what was whole. Because when the soul is whole, means its realities are reaching to it, it has a tremendous power. And shaitan want to block all of that so that the soul cannot gain its power. So the reality of their salat al janazah taqaibeen is that they see themselves on that janazah. That everyone should vis visualize themselves on that table of janazah, the Ya Rabbi it's my funeral prayer that everybody inshaAllah gathering tonight from my funeral prayer. And with every takbirat Ya Rabbi destroy, destroy my dunya, my hubb dunya destroy my nafs, destroy my, my hubb al-hawa and my, my seeking of my pleasure, my physical pleasures and destroy the shaitan that continuously is destroying everything I'm trying to do Ya Rabbi. Means every Salat al-Maghrib they're entering into an intention that only Allah Zawajaz, Allah Zawajaz when they say Allahu Akbar like a tremendous lightning and power that come to destroy everything. Al-Muntaqeem Allah Zawajaz say, I'm going to avenge you. I'm going to destroy that shaitan and everything he thinks he's doing, I send upon you like a lightning that destroy and smash everything wrong and bring you back into my perfection. Make your desire for dunya to be destroyed, your di desire for your hawa I destroy it. The nafs I discipline it so it become your buraq and you ride upon it and shaitan will fear you and run away from you because you become mukhlaseen. And shaitan has no, no business with the mukhlas but continuously chasing. Means they enter into an understanding that they are praying their janazah. By the time they reach means from the qab then they start to move into the sir. And these are the world of light in which the sir is symbolic of their salah and the reality of their salah. Means the qalb is the station of knowledges. They understood that to reach Allah's Divinely Presence is that you have to enter a state of fana. You have to annihilate. Why Allah gives the symbol of the darkness is a symbol of annihilation that don't manifest anything. If you're coming to Malakut, leave your manifestation behind. Then Salat al Isha, the Isha prayer, is the apex of Malakut. It's the height of darkness when the night is the darkest. And Allah is for those whom are making tafakkur, Allah is then describing the importance of your Salat al-Isha to your Salat al-Fajr is going to be your door to my Divinely Presence. Because at the time of Salat al-Isha everything is darkened and the servant begins to remember the Heavenly Kingdom. All the tanzil, all the, the blessings and the lights begin to manifest upon the servant. That's why all of the holy nights are at night time. They're, they're taking the dress of all the heavenly manifestations, they come upon the heavens first and then they come towards dunya. Because then the servant is entering into Salat al Isha in a state in which they are losing that existence. They're entering into a state of tranquility with mawt and qabl al mawt. And they understood their phase of death because they're asking to return back to Allah. 
As soon as they enter back into Salat al Isha and Salat al Isha is finishing, they're entering in now to Salat al Tahajjud. These are important points of energy that from Salat al Isha they pass through that black point, that black circle because these are the phases of a sun, these are the najj. When Prophet described my Sahabi, they are a stars. Any one of them you follow, this is a phase of the stars that you have from this star to this star to the white star to the pulsar and then the center being like a black hole which its power is so immense that it absorbs everything that nothing escapes the black hole. This is from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad when Allah gave such a dress and such a majesty to Prophet that means when the servant is praying salat from Salat al-Isha and moving to Salat al-Fajr, what Allah want from them is then wake up, wake up and pray your Salat al-Tahajjud. Means this whole phase from Salat al-Isha to Salat al-Fajr is the womb of the reality that every day has a life and every day has a death. Means from the time of Maghrib that life is coming, the reality of its life is coming, Salat al-Isha is dressing it, Salat al-Fajr is now the womb, from Salat al-Fajr it comes out and now has an existence. You manifest at the Salat al-Fajr and you come into existence again. <coughs> By night time you died, they go through the phase of death they move through that, that channel of light and realities. That's why the fajr is so powerful that all the lights that the servant and those servants are taking is that they annihilate themselves in this phase of darkness. They lose their importance, they enter into their Salat al-Fajr and Allah dresses them from the realities of their paradise. And that's why we said in, in Surat al-Qadr, that is the reality, Salat al-Fajr is the reality of Salamun Hiya Mitla al-Fajr. Hatta Mitla al-Fajr, the Salamun means Allah is dressing them from that reality, blessing them all the way to their Fajr. Means that how to take the dress of your paradise reality is only through Salat al-Fajr. How to take the knowledges through your paradise reality is through Salat al-Fajr. As soon as they pray their Salat al-Fajr, Allah dressing the soul, the soul with all of its paradise realities. As soon as they leave that Salat al-Fajr, then the next Salat that coming is Salat al-Zuhur. Zuhur is actually like a Zuhur, it's their manifestation. And they understood that these are Rijalullah who Allah described not trade nor business distracts them from the remembrance of Allah Means they understood that in every moment there's a life and death and in every day there's a life and death. They, fa they pass that phase of death to be dressed by their paradise realities. As soon as the day comes up they dress with the reality of that day. And they go all the way to Salat al-Zuhr. The Salat al-Zuhr is their zuhur, is their manifestation. Then what Prophet described is the most difficult prayer for the believer is the zuhur prayer because he's busy with business and work. Why? Because it's symbolic of our manifestation and our love for dunya. The shaitan wants to come and take the servant to make them think that they're going to live in this dunya forever and forgetting that no death is coming, death may come in five minutes and in fifty years. But that servant from Maqam al Ihsan is understanding that, Ya Rabbi, this is my time of manifestation that I pray my Salat al Zuhr as to not be conquered by the dunya. It's important and it's tremendously important to show the nafs that no, I'm not conquered by dunya. And that's the one where everyone wants an excuse to get out of Salat al Zuhr, can I shorten it, can I pray in my car, can I do anything because of the busyness of dunya. 
So then how to conquer that reality is what they're teaching us because when you understand the reality it opens an understanding. Fajr is not just a time that you're praying in the dark and it's dark and everyone's asleep. You're coming through a birth canal, you're being born that day. And Allah described every day, I have a new tajalli. Means the one who catches that tajalli as if he's born new that day. Not the same tajalli that Allah dressed him with yesterday. As soon as he enters into that fajr, as soon as he prays his salat al fajr, as soon as he comes out, is as if he's been born new that day and dressed with all of its blessing. And then whatever Allah opening for that servant, they're describing that marriage on Allah, no matter business or trade, because all of them big merchants, all of them big traders, they're not people who sit on carpets and do nothing. So all of marriage on Allah, not business nor trade, divert them from the remembrance of Allah means they pray that Salat al zuhr to make sure that they are good with Allah The Ya Rabbi we are from Malakut and we understood and servants of the Malakut and we are your servants also in the mulk because Baina Isha and Zuhr is from Malakut and the mulk. The, the prayer of mulk is your zuhur, is your manifestation of Salat al-Zuhr. Then they understood that in this mulk I have to submit to Allah so my Salat al-Zuhr important and my life is Baina Zuhur wa Asr. Again I'm going to die between zuhur and asr. So that's all our manifestation because you take, we take life as one day. Don't make too many big plans. You don't know if you have 50 days, 5 years, 50 years. You say, Ya Rabbi we live day by day. My manifestation, my existence and I put all my importance upon myself, it's only from zuhur to asr. You're only manifesting from salat al zuhur to Salat al-Asr. So then they understood the mulk of this dunya is all fading until you reach Salat al-Asr and then Allah give you even a surah, Surat al-Asr. And Allah describes in that surah that in Salam Khusr you are dying. You are… don't, don't think you have too much that becomes the, the understanding that you have to meditate and it doesn't make sense on the tongue that you actually are born dying. Everything about you from the time Allah gave you life because He's describing it. He's describing in Surat Al-Asr that you are in a state of descent. You're not growing like a tree where I brought you here you're going to live for a thousand years. From the moment you came and I gave you life, you're dying. Now you're going to die in one day, 50 days, 500 days, 50,000 days, you're going. And everything within you as it's growing, it's also dying. All, all your cells, there's three million cells a day, die within the body. Out of your four trillion cells, means we are in a continuous state of where we think we're alive and everything within us also in a state of death. And Allah for the servants from trying to reach their reality, Ya Rabbi that we're leaving this mulk of dunya and we entered into asr and again this day is entering into its qiyamah. Because how are you supposed to prepare for qiyamah? Fifty years from now? No. Every day has a qiyamah, every day has a death. As soon as you enter into that word Allah tawassal bi haqqi wa tawassal bi sabr. That you're going to enter into this phase of death. Your success from your salat al-asr back to your maghrib means you're dying now. This phase of life of yours. If you truly understood just one day of it, that as soon as you enter into salat al-asr all your plans mean nothing, all your hopes mean nothing. Means that you enter into yourself that, Ya Rabbi whatever I plan I could be going. 
and that everything is leaving and Allah then reminding them this path of haqq is based on sabr, have patience. That everything in your life is going to be based on sabr and the only way to be dressed by sifat as sabr because when Allah dressed those ibadullah from sifat as sabr they've been dressed from all the attributes because the last attribute is the most difficult. All the other attributes is tawassul bi haqq. Allah dress you, dress you, dress but not complete until you've been dressed by sabr. That if you're going to be on a path of haqq, it has to be based on patience. The patience comes and awliya come and teach you that you're dying, you're dying. From the time you have life, you are truly actually dying. And this is the oxymoron of life that we think we have forever. And Allah says, if you really observe yourself, you're actually going down. I gave you a certain amount of breaths, don't waste them, don't run too much and exercise too much and you lose all your breath. I gave you numbered amount of breath, numbered amount of heartbeats, that everything is perfectly numbered. And he said, why don't you look to my creation to understand the reality better? And then we look to the birds because they represent angelic realities. The birds are singing at what two times? Is reality. Is your asr is a state of death. You're entering in actual energy of death. That's why Prophet said, don't sleep between asr and maghrib. You may go majnoon. Why? There's an energy being changed. A life force means a life is going and a tajalli of qiyamah, tajalli of death and mouth is coming. As a result of that tajalli, the birds when they recite at maghrib is not the same praising as it is at fajr. Fajr is very beautiful. At fajr when you hear the birds saying, Abu Bakr Siddiq said, you already missed your fajr. The birds did it before you. When, <laughs> when you sing, hear the birds singing at fajr, they are praising Allah with a beautiful praise. Why? To receive these tajallis. They want this manifestation of life because they understood that by, by Maghrib we may be dead, something's going to eat us, we want the manifestation of this day and they praise with a beautiful praise. Then go to the same birds at Salatul Asr. On Burnaby, on the freeway, there's at least 10 million birds on that exit near the Willowden. Yeah, huh? Yeah, BCIT, right there. 10,000 or wherever anybody is on the internet, wherever they have birds, you hear the zikr of maqrib, it's not a very pleasant sound. It's more like <laughs> They are begging Allah to be protected. They're begging Allah that their death is coming. Many will die at night and some will survive for the day. And this is when they have hardship. And Allah doesn't even describe nighttime is zulamat, is every oppression. Means you're, the servant is entering in to a state of oppression as they're dying in that day. And that's why you need tawassul bi haqqi wa tawassul bi sabr. That you're, you're, you were an oppressor to yourself that whole day thinking that you're existing forever. My Salatul Asr is a reminder for you, no, this day that you thought is going forever is just now in a phase of death. And begin to see how everything is going and darkness is coming and all the plans in the beautiful daylight have gone and now zulumat has again descended upon that servant. So it means it's a conscious meditation and tafakkur of the salah. The Ya Rabbi, the Salat al Asr coming and I'm entering now back into a phase of death where everything slows down, that all the running of dunya has, has is put itself down and I'm entering back into that phase. And then my day and my reality of the heavens again begins at Maghrib. So the two powerful points when the birds are singing is Salat al Fajr because they're coming through this 
fajr which is actually faraj is your salvation is your faraj and your zuhur your manifesting from the time you manifest you're only living till asr and you're dead by asr means everything is going the darkness has come again and from asr you're going back into that ocean of reality because you're passing the akhfa tajalli each of these these names have a tremendous reality that that fajr and that asr is passing the akhfa reality the akhfa reality is a black hole in which it takes everything in and nothing of it remains this is the annihilation that is the station of annihilation in which the servant to be dressed by annihilation and these are the servants of mawt and qabl al mawt subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati muhammad al mustafa wa bi siri surat al fatiha Sidanan Nabi Sidanan Nabi Sidanan Nabi Sidanan Nabi